Hello everybody, Manix here. It's time for another Tabletop Knife Review. Feel free to subscribe, hit the little bell notification if you do not want to miss any future Knife Weekly videos. Flashlights, lighters, guns, you know the whole ordeal. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get right into it. This is on the Cold Steel Black Talon 2. There was a Black Talon 1, but it looked nothing like this. It was a completely different knife from many, many years ago, and it's a much more collectible knife these days. But this is the Black Talon 2 that came out a little bit more recently, a few years ago. One thing I'll get out of the way right now, uh, these Plain Edge Black Talons currently, as I'm filming this in late 2022, very late November, I don't know what's going on with them. They're not being made at the moment, I don't think. They're not currently available. You have to find them. They're, they're pretty difficult to find. But the serrated version of this exact same knife, everything the exact same thing, same blade steel, same locking mechanism, same materials, Cutouts, everything's exactly the same on the serrated model, which is currently available for around 100, 110 bucks, give or take. Uh, these plain edge ones are hard to find. If you do find them new, you're going to be spending closer to about 200 bucks, from what I've seen anyway. But that's current. If you're watching this even just a few months in the future, that might be completely different. That's just what I'm saying right now. Anyway, really, really awesome, awesome knife. I love cold steel. Uh, th this is something a little different from what they usually do. Uh, it, just, it looks so badass. It's just really, really cool. You got the menacing double recurve hawk bill blade on here. It just screams defense. Defensive knife. Uh, and it's, it is good for utility tests. If you're cutting rope or fibrous materials, you can get them caught up in this hook right here. It'll help uh, as you are cutting with these reverse curves like this. The material binds up more and more and more as you are cutting through it. It has nowhere to go but deeper into the cutting edge. That's how these hawk bill style blades work. Now, this is sort of a double recurve extreme hawk bill design, so it's even further than that. It's like hook design. It's great for defense because it's going to really rip into and get caught up in the material that you're slashing in. The only disadvantage is if you were going backwards, and if you were in a defensive situation, the spine is going to be rubbing against your opponent, your attacker, whatever is going on, rather than into them. So you have to kind of know what you're doing with these things, rather than most blade shapes, you kind of just like flail them around and... Yeah, you'll cause some damage. This you got to be more intentful. But if you land it correctly, it's going to do a lot more damage. So that's what's so cool about this blade. And it's just cool looking. Let's just get that out of the way. It's a really, really cool looking knife. Its blade is just very extreme, and it's more purposeful for a specific scenario rather than being general purpose. But at that scenario, it excels. It could not be better. Now, some people may complain about the tip being too thin, and yeah, it's a very, very acute point. That's just kind of what you have to deal with with this style of blade. But whoosh, look how thick it is right here. Damn, it's thick. Thick with double C right there. It is an extremely thick tip. It's thinner right here. It slims out, and then they make it thinner. That's an extremely ingenious design. I think of the Spyderco Civilian, which is a similar blade shape, fully serrated, also a very good knife, but the tip's really delicate on that thing. I doubt it's as thick as this right here, so I think Cold Steel kind of compensated for the thinness and the acuteness of the tip by making the steel extra thick right here. So really smart. Uh, speaking of which, I also like this little cutout right here in the blade. You can wave this off the pocket with the thumb plate right here. You can, If this were in the closed position, if you're not aware, tip up carry, you pull it out. You can snag it right here, and because they have this little extra dip right here, it helps even more, so it's even easier to wave it off of your pocket that way. So amazing blade shape. Couldn't be better, except for the edge right here. Usually, the cutting edge will have like a little choil right here to distinguish where the cutting edge begins and the unsharpened portion of the blade begins, but it kind of just gradually turns into that, which sucks. Yeah, sometimes Cold Steel does it, sometimes they don't. I don't know why they didn't do it on this one, but... Other than that, the blade is perfection. We have two different grind patterns on here. We have them going horizontally. Then we have somewhat of a mirror finish right here. You can see my finger reflecting in there a little bit, but not on here. It's very interesting. It's a two-tone finish on the blade. Very beautiful, very purposeful. It's just they nailed it. Almost a 10 out of 10, except for that edge grind down there. Everything else is just perfection on that. So beautiful, very functional, awesome. It's comfortable. It's got the double choil thing going on right here, similar to the Recon one, but a little bit wider, a little bit more simple. It's very flat G10 scales on here, no steel liners or anything, FRN or maybe even an aluminum backspacer right there. You can see it kind of curving out to sort of accommodate the cutting edge right there. That's very cool. Triad locking mechanism. If you're not familiar, it's one of the strongest locking mechanisms in the world. Looks like it's stonewashed or tumbled of some sorts, but maybe not. 
extremely strong. It's a lockback, but with an integral stop pin, which is fat AF right there as well. So damn, it's an extreme. There's no movement in any direction. It's just extremely strong. And for what it is, it's fast. Yeah, you're going to need a little bit of a wrist movement. It's worth it. It's worth the strength. And for a defensive style knife, which this looks like it's intending to be, you're going to want a strong lockup on there. So good job on that. So yeah, even though it is a little tricky to flick it out, this, these thumb plates are a little slippery. Uh, usually have a thumb set or thumb hold. They're a little bit easier to flick out. But this, I don't know, on my thumb, I kind of slip around a little bit. You just got to be a little bit more intentful with what you're doing. But it works just fine. But again, it is waveable too, so maybe that's kind of redundant to say. So smooth deployment overall, even though it's not the best deployment. Again, we have an extremely strong locking mechanism. Very comfortable overall. I love the shape of it. It's cool looking. A lot of abrupt corners and turns, as well as some curves here and there. It's very cool and kind of Batman-ish looking. I like that pocket clip. Different from what Cold Steel normally puts on their knives. It's wide. I, again, it kind of looks stonewashed or tumbled at least somewhat like a half mirror polish almost you see some reflection right there just a little bit not too much i don't like too much mirror polish because then the knife just looks cheap to me but this is like just in the sweet spot it's beautiful very cool very angular the texturing on the g10s actually not as rough as you might think some cold steels have extremely aggressive g10 this is more medium traction but it's still really good so i like that too so for just a g10 handle scale knife uh it, you can imagine it's going to be on the lighter side, actually, for this size. Blade length is 4 inches on the nose, handle length 5.5 inches, making the overall length 9.5 inches. And according to their website, it weighs 4.8 ounces. But, you know me, let's check if that is the case on my scale. What does my scale have to say about that? 4.46 ounces. They're saying 4.8 4.46, so it's even lighter than what they're claiming, as far as what my scale says, so even lighter than I thought, so that's completely reasonable, it's under 5 ounces, it's under 4.5 ounces according to my scale, so you get a heck of a lot of steel right here, a big old 4 inch thick blade right here, and the thin G10 slabs right here with no steel liners or anything, it's going to be nice and light. For its size overall, it's actually very adequate. It's slim, too. Look how slim these handles get. It's slimmer than the Cold Steel Recon one by just a smidge. And it's very squared off. It, it's just beautiful. It's slightly rounded on the edges right here. we got some cutouts for kind of failed jimping, as usual, which Cold Steel is notorious for doing. Yeah, it's better than not having it, I suppose, but it's not that useful either. But regardless, who really cares? You can scooch down here if you want. If you're just a little bit extra reach, you can use that choil, and then your pinky kind of freely floats around down here. It's not the most comfortable, but it's it's good enough, I guess. But ideally, you're going to be want to be in this position. It's relatively comfortable. It's very slim, so it carries well. Uh, flicks out okay. You know, it, it is a lockback style knife, so you have to kind of fight the blade in order to deploy it. You got to give it a little bit of a wrist flick. But again, that's the price you pay for having such a damn strong locking mechanism. So it is what it is. I'm not going to complain about that. That's fine. Again, and it's waveable too because of that thumb plate. S35VN blade steel. I'm so glad Cold Steel has been putting that on a lot of their knives because that is a miracle steel. That is a great blade steel. And for the $100 range, $110, maybe $120 on the higher end. If you find these, let's pretend this is the serrated model because I know you can get those right now as I'm filming this for that price. Um, that, that's completely adequate. Really high quality blade steel right there. So for about 110 bucks or so, that's that's totally fine. It's not the deal of a lifetime, but it's not expensive either. That's actually okay. There's knives out there with cheaper materials, I would say, that are in like the $160 range. So that that's completely adequate for what you're getting. They're a very good price overall. Again, very cool, menacing, sick kind of looking knife, but very functional, very good for defense. And even EDC, I actually like the Hawkbill style blades for opening up packages, scoring tape, even dinky, stupid little EDC tasks like that. These blades are great, actually. So I really, they're just not good for food prepping, which some people may argue, but who cares? I have kitchen knives for food prepping. Why would I use my folding knife for that, you know? That's how I see it anyway. Maybe you can call me an idiot if you want. Sure, I don't really care, but I like these blades for EDC tasks. They're not as versatile, but they're hell of a lot more useful for specific cuts. So it's really cool looking, really menacing, very functional, lightweight for what it is. Decent price, amazing blade steel for the price. Amazing. S35VN, I would argue, is better than S30V. Kind of depends on what you're talking about exactly, but 
I say it's better overall. For the price point, for this style of knife, this is probably the strongest one on the market, period, because of that triad lock right there. Directly comparing this to the Spyderco Civilian, let's say, which is closer to the $200 range, uh, this one's a lot more strong. I say it has a better blade steel. The tip's not going to snap as easily. And, of course, you have a stronger locking mechanism. Overall, I would pick this over the Civilian, even though I love that knife as well. That knife's almost twice the price right now as I'm filming this, and this one's about twice the strength of that. So, sorry, Civilian. I think the Black Talent 2 just kicked your ass. Sorry. I love them both, though, but for function overall, I think this is better, hands down. The Cold Steel Black Talent 2, amazing, amazing knife. Great for defense, really cool looking, but actually practical for EDC tasks as well. Yeah, it's kind of overbuilt, it's kind of big, but it's not too heavy either. And it's slim. And the texturing on the G10 is not too aggressive either if you're not into, you know, you don't want your pocket to rip up too much. This carries well, the pocket clip's a little on the tighter side. Yeah, you can see how it cants down or like that. You're going to have to yank it out of your pocket a little bit. But other than that, everything else is pretty much squared away. So amazing, amazing cool knife. Old Steel Black Talon. Awesome.